And thank you very much for joining us once again on PM Express. You may have noticed Parliament is back from a long break. This meeting of Parliament is going to be a very interesting one. This is the meeting after that long controversy over the E-Levy that eventually got passed. A part of it is still before the Supreme Court. There are also three members of Parliament who possibly, for the very first time in, under this constitution, may possibly lose their seats. Um, and the verdict lies in the hands of Parliament itself. There are very intriguing uh, constitutional questions that still remain to be answered. We'll, we'll get into that. And there are broad issues of politics that Parliament has always been seized with uh, in the past. We'll talk about that too. Members of Parliament themselves uh, get, get uh, caught up in the issue about monetization of politics, etc. We've seen the MPP regional elections go by. Delegations have surfaced again. Uh, I have a guest with me who himself possibly will be very instrumental as far as the party is concerned. They are all part to be going to the same possible phase of electing executives. I wonder what his concerns are with that. And we'll talk about the economy too, if you haven't read yet. Ghana is one of the top 10 countries at high risk of debt distress, with the prediction that we might possibly default in our in payment of our debt. Let's say apocalypse for any economy uh, anywhere in the world. And so there's a lot to talk about in Parliament's place in all this. My guest is the minority chief whip, Muntaka Mubarak. Mr. Mubarak, thank you for your time here on PM yeah, Express. Welcome. Uh, great to have you again. Yeah. Um, another meteor parliament has just begun. Yeah. I wonder what your expectation is of this parliament. The last one, the last meeting was, was characterized by a lot of acrimony about the e-levy <laughs> um, and, and an attempt to remove some MPs. You, you're back again. Is it going to be more peaceful, more calm, more collaborative and consultative? Well, I mean, that is what we always hope for. I mean, but uh, I've always said that the second meeting of parliament, I haven't been in this house for about a decade, is what I usually call the oversight meeting. Because, I mean, you know that the first meeting is the state of the nation, where the president comes to say a lot of things, then you debate about them, you argue and what have you. The second meeting usually doesn't have any ceremonial thing. Mm -hmm. So for me, it leaves parliament with an opportunity one, you've approved budget in December to review where are they, what is going on well, what is not going on well, get committees to oversight properly, visit sites, go out and see what the ministries and agencies are saying they are really doing. All these things, this is an opportunity. You have some bills that are very critical, this is an opportunity to do them because it's a quiet, uh, what you call a meeting. Usual second meetings, it is going to last between now and July ending. So you have this about two and a half months to be able to do a number of, or two months to be able to do a lot of things uh, that are usually not pushed hard by government. Mm. It gives you some room to be able to do that. Because usually the third meeting, you know, is a session. You know, we have a session also here. Each session has three meetings. So the first meeting is what I've just spoken about, the state of the nation. The second meeting is very usually quiet and not too long. Then the third meeting is the October, December, where you do another budget. So this middle one, the only thing that may probably come is the budget uh, media review. review. Uh -huh. And usually it doesn't come with too many uh, fanfare. Do we hope to have a quiet house? Well, let's hope. What is government really doing to help parliament to achieve that? Unfortunately, I don't see much. There hasn't been any, because last year when we speak, we spoke a lot about attempts to try and get parliament to cooperate in the back of the fight over the e-levy and all. Mm. And I know there are some eminent Ghanaians and institutions that were trying to mediate and trying to get you. I don't yeah. know whether that has yielded any results. Well, unfortunately, I, that's one of the biggest problems we have in our country. And I'm sorry to say this. I mean, even Council of State tried to intervene. A lot of people tried to intervene. Once the e-levy got passed, everybody goes to sleep. Because once they, they got the e-levy, so it makes it's very difficult for you if you are in this house, especially if you're in opposition. I mean, I'm not talking about only NDC or MPP. When things are tough, then people try to say, oh, can we find a way of working together? Can we mediate? Can we set some parameters aside so that it, uh, it helps reduce the tension and what have you? Once the particular issue is over, then everybody goes to sleep. So when the next time there's some controversial thing and then they are calling again, then you begin to doubt sincerity. Mm. Were they really sincere about how to get Parliament to really work? Or it was just about getting that particular item to get done? Because since the, the I mean, I know that 
at least when we met the council, so what they said is, oh, we wanted to meet you individually and see how we can then meet you as a group. We want to hear each side alone and then probably see how we can. Well, maybe after hearing both sides, they were satisfied that what they've heard is okay. So they haven't so come they, back for the they, group. They haven't come back for the, the group. So many other persons have tried to do this. And my worry as a chief whip is that it keeps the suspicion that in court, all others are doing what they are doing is just to help government to do what government is doing, whether it is the good or the bad, whatever government wants is what almost everybody is trying to get government to achieve. And I think that is problematic because you see, we were lucky that the e levy, yes, the way it ended, weren't too happy with it, and what have you, it didn't lead to anybody really getting any major injury the next time you don't know what's going to come. Mm. And when you allow all the goodwill of institutions like all those who wanted to intervene, got consumed, the next time there's some controversial thing. We are hearing from the grapevine, they want to come with uh, a Japan. The Japan, not grapevine. The, and then if the you call me, has said so. if you call me, with all humility and all sincerity, why, why would be the enthusiasm to come? I won't. Because I would just see that all you do is to try to help government to just get government things done. Whether it is for the good or for the bad, you will not listen. Once government wanted it, government must have it. And I think that's worrying. And I hope all these institutions that were concerned should show concern for us to be able to have some amicable way of working. Because you see, this hung parliament, honorable chairman also always argue, it's not hung. I say, well, it's hung. It's hung because 137, 137, each party, and then one independent. If we don't find a new way of working, believe me, this will keep repeating itself. Anytime you come with something that is controversial and where entrenched positions are taken, you are going to be having the same kind of challenges. Probably maybe even worse. Because you see, with e levy, it dragged for five months, and then, I mean, they say, the Montega don't be saying that. I keep saying, with the help of the court. <laughs> You managed to get them. Are you sure the next time, having that experience that, oh, a court or some other institution could be used to do this, minority is going to keep the same strategy? I don't think so. What other strategy could they probably use? That other strategy may be unethical, unorthodox, maybe a very difficult one. I get it. It appears you've learned your lesson yeah, from the email. So that is the thing. When you allow people to come and say, oh, I've learned my lesson, you don't know what else they will be doing the next time. So I think that those who claim to be interested in trying to get this uh, hung parliament to work effectively should try and do that. Other than that, because I have always said, if government wanted to come with something, you could do a pre-meeting to agree on the do's and the don'ts. Things that you will take minimum. Things that you can give away. Then you try to build that concept before the thing But comes. doesn't that happen? No. You will always be there and then they just dump, dump it on, on, on in the house. You see, there's this mentality. Yes, probably, I don't know, I wasn't there during the First Republic. Neither was I in this house during the Second and Third Republic. But in this Fourth Republic, we've had a constitution and a parliament that has always behaved that, look, we are in charge. We are in the majority. You can have your say and we'll have our way. It is not the same with this one. This one is not the issue that you can just say that, oh, you just have your say, let me have my way. No, this is, not, this is a different parliament. So if we don't retune ourselves, I keep saying this, if we don't retune ourselves, we will continue to have this challenge. You see both sides get lambasted by their own base, mm. whether majority or minority. When every issue passes, you see we being insulted from the minority from our own base, the majority get insulted from their own base. I'm just telling you that there's this mindset that, look, do it only our way. We, the minority and our base, think that just do it our way. With a greater respect. Even somebody is going to die, do it on our way. They are side to, look, we are in charge. We must show them where power lies. Look, we have everything on our side. Do it our way. So long as everybody keeps doing it his or her way, I'm sorry to say, I don't pray for that, but I see it coming. One day we may have some controversial thing, and uh, it may be terrible. I mean, talking uh, about controversial thing, the finance minister did a press conference recently and was very categorical that the Japa royalties deal 
is going to be brought back as instructed by the president. We don't know when, but it looks possibly like this, this, this particular meeting. What, what, what is the minority position still that you oppose? <laughs> I can bet you that our position to Ejapa is bigger than our position to Ilewe. Really? Yes. And I will not sit here and tell you our strategy. But believe me, if that attempt is made, they won't find it easy. But that money, government Ghana that needs money? 500 no, million, I'm, at I'm, least I'm, if you're using the last time, look, dollars. Look, look. Government Ghana needs that. We are look, in an economic look, crisis. Look, Evans, I keep telling you this. You give somebody a whole cow to go and sell. He can't tell that, oh, I ran into a loss. Just give me a tie. After this tie, I can assure you that I'm more judicious. I'll be able to make profit. And you believe that person. Let's say this $500 million. Worst case scenario, multiply by, by eight. That's how much? That's how much? That's about four billion. You think it's too small? Is that okay? You've given somebody 300, over 300 billion. He cannot even account for it. And he's struggling to get four, four billion. Look, I just want them to appreciate one thing. You know we fought to get it removed from the budget. You remember that? Yes. So one, it's not in the budget. Well, so also, oh, they may reintroduce in the mid-review. In the mid, uh, mid year mid budget, mid -year review. budget review. I won't sit here and tell you what we are going to do. They will get the fearless and the most resistant ever had in any parliament if an attempt is made to bring this thing. Believe me. But they, I'm not sending any threat. I'm only telling you that, look, any attempt to think that you can just come with a Japan into this house, you should prepare for the worst. Because, you see, we've come to realize that, I'm sorry to say this, a lot of the elderly, the so-called opinion leaders in our country, and everybody, everybody has gone dead silent. Because of their huge and, I mean, super loud silence, Elisa would no any other option than to take the fight to prevent Ejapa from ever happening into our own hands. But this Ejapa will not be the same. They are talking about revising it. You, you don't even want to hear the yes. revised version what yet? What we are saying, you see, before you look, take a decision. on Friday, was it Friday or Thursday, there was this brilliant uh, loan about 75 million euro. Evans, I still need a hospital in my place, in Aswansi, a big hospital. There are a lot of challenges with even the health centers that we have across the country. Go to Konfanochi, people are lying on bed for Go to Kalibu, go to all the facilities. We need this money because the concessional aspect of that money is so huge that it's virtually almost close to like free money. But we resisted and said that so long as it's going to be this just the mention of COVID in it, we are not going to approve it until they come and account for how they spend the COVID money. You, you are hearing some, uh, what do you call it, video going around, or is it audio going around about the one of the vice chair of Northern Region, their former candidate for Sanorgo. If truly the thing she's saying is what happened with COVID money, every Ghanaian should be interested in this our fight for COVID money to be accounted for. That means a lot happen with this COVID money. So just by COVID, we are rejecting, I mean, my, one of my colleagues were sick and had COVID during, just after the 7th and, 6th and 7th January election of the speaker. I know some who were in coma and had to go to the Gar East. I saw death so close to many of them and the, the is a mobile gas cylinder that they go around with or even by their bed. I will not elude myself to say that we don't need to build gas, uh, oxygen plants in our hospitals across the country. This money that they are talking about, 75 million, part of what is supposed to be used for is this mm. oxygen production. Yet, we said because the sheer mention of COVID in that, we are not ready to approve it until they account for the money. Should tell you that the sheer mention of Ejapa, you are going to have a regardless of 
what the revision says. I can assure you that if there's any better thing they may want to do, they can change the name, bring the terms, let us go through the, the vigorous nature of parliamentary approval, not like what they did the last time. You just come, you hardly push the hands of the committee. You know what the committee does, one parliament wants to work very effectively, is that you give time to the committee, they do public hearing, people who have other views come and contribute, so that they, 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 they virtually shape what you brought. One parliament is working with its free hand, that's what parliament does. If they want anything about our minerals, one, change the name, two, let it go through the vigorous process of parliament where people can come, whether in the mining sector, nananum, so you want to be, go to the committee, so that invite we, Momoranda, Momoranda, people come give their view, so that the parliament can own that, oh, process. we can do with this. Why they are going to come, you see, <laughs> Evans, you cannot use poison. You say that this is poisonous, but I get it. Once you say this is poisonous, <laughs> everybody runs away from it. It has always become a name that, uh, for us in minority, is forbidden. Hmm. So, is that like telling me that this bottle is labeled poison, but oh, it will not kill as fast as you think, or this poison? doesn't kill once you, you see it label poison you want to stay away from it to be on the safer side anything in japan i can assure you the minority will not want to have anything to do with it and look believe me it is not going to be we will not have anything to do with it because we are going to walk away or we are going to wash our hands of it yes when we walked away we were 106 and they were 169 this time they are 137 and we are 137, and there's an independent person in between us, adding up to them, 138. We are not just going to walk away. I mean, we, I, I hear you say that, but I go back to the um, the approval of the e-levy. Same position you took. Yeah. But eventually, they had a pass. They yeah. had a pass on the day when they caught you off guard from, from James Abonis' point of view. Now you have one of your members who... There's a huge doubt over his continual stay in, 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 in Parliament. Yes. So I, what's I, the guarantee I, that you, I, this, your I, firm I, I resistance will hold? I perfectly agree with you. And that's why I, I was telling that we learned our lesson. We learned our lesson the hardest way. You know, yes, this was our position, and we've come for it for five months. Then on that unfaithful, unfaithful day, one of us was not there and we are giving a look can we test what the Supreme Court is going to say on its own ruling what is there to test again Evans <laughs> what is what is there to test again we've seen how it's going and how they are dragging their feet they don't seem to be even interested in it what is there to test again that's what I'm saying that when institutions fail they leave us with no inner adoption than to take the decision of what we want to do into our own hands and uh, even I, I, I mean it, that look, what's happened with Ejapa and, and uh, sorry, e levy and all those things have taught us a lot of lessons. We have reviewed almost every decision that we've taken. Yes, some would think that they were right. Some would think that if we had rather than kept to our original Which ones decision, do you think you for example, better? I mean, for example, when we walked out, it was just to put the Supreme Court in the difficulty that they find themselves. I get in it. We could have stayed and voted every single one and lost. And everybody will now see that, yes, the one that six of us were there and we lost. But believe me, when it comes to Japan, you cannot, I can't guarantee you that we are going to be that sober. So you're going to stay and make sure that every line is checked and voted on? I, I won't tell you all as uh, our, our Saturday, but I can assure you, any attempt to bring it apart to this house would not be fair. It will not be easy at all for those in government and even the, our, our colleagues in the chamber. I don't think that's going to be easy. You've touched on the point on the uh, approval of the uh, e levy, which is that when you walked out, you wanted to, you know, you know through the challenge to the Supreme Court, which you've done subsequently. Yeah. The case has been filed. Um, 
th that case is yet to be heard, yeah. by the way. Many say that case is dead on arrival for many, many reasons. Because, first of all, even the evidence of the numbers in the house has become an issue. Huh. The, the, the Supreme Court is what you're going to be relying on will be the vote and proceedings. And the vote and proceedings <laughs> obviously says mm. that there were enough members that day, more than 200 members in the house to do business, that you've lost already. You accept that. That is not true. You know, the vote and proceedings of the house is corrected every time. So you cannot use the uncorrected vote and proceedings as the true records of the house. Unless you have decided to ignore how the house is run. Every morning, just check the order of business of the house. Prayers. After prayers, correction of votes. Mm. So you do correction of votes to, to let it reflect exactly what happened the day before. One, in the, one that is in the public domain, not the corrected one, a workout was not shown. In the corrected one, the workout is shown. So there's a corrected one now. Yes, there's a corrected one. But how many, instructively, how many members so it shows, did that indicate? No, listen. So it shows. Normally, the way the vote and procedure will capture it, and the official record will say, at 1.31 p.m., all the minority worked out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and at 2 o'clock, a vote on this was taken. So you don't need an NG to tell you if all of us worked out, how many were there. Even if all of them were there, which we all knew, at least the voting proceedings have recorded are just as absent. Means that you were 137. So that is the evidence you be submitted. Yes, to and the point. video evidence too are there that once we worked out, they took 16 other decisions. 16. This same Supreme Court says that decision in the House, there will be quorum for decision making. It's different from courage for business and all of, of it. And those decision quorum should be at the time of the decision. So I don't that if you remember when we rejected the budget, they worked out. Yeah. And the vote and positions of that house recorded that there were 274 MPs. The Supreme Court said that our rejection of the budget is not for null and void. Right? Yeah. Based on decision quorum. Now they are caught with the same decision quorum. How can, let's see the gymnastics they will do. Let's see the grammar they will bring. Let's see the storytelling they, they will bring up. But the reality is that the corrected vote and procedure of the house will clearly show when we worked out and when all the other decisions were taken. That is beyond doubt. Hmm. But at least, for those in our caucus that thought that we should do this just to expose the challenge that they are going to put parliament and how parliament runs when they do not know. You see, sometimes the painful thing is that with the greatest and all humility, someone could have been a Supreme Court judge, but he has no idea how Parliament runs. You just have to read it. You have votes and And many of them there. don't. But the I'm sorry. The they, many of them don't. If you look at the judgment, this, this is the Supreme Court. They definitely would have considered all the facts no, that's before the, the decision that is, that is the pain. Reached. That is the pain. When you go up to the extent of saying that a portion of the standard order of parliament should be expunged. But it's inconsistent with the constitution. That's the that's, job of the That's, that's what the person is thinking. Has he gone back to the first republic? How the, how the standard orders and the constitution have run? Because remember that all we've been doing over this period is just forward the first republic Republican constitution, make some few changes, turn it into a second republic. Then the second republican constitution, some amendment to third, then to the fourth. Largely you've seen that our constitution has stayed virtually about the same over the period with just some few changes. If you have studied all that, there were times that we made speakers, speakers were members of parliament. We decided to dis delink that. There were times that we stated clearly that when it comes to voting, the second and third deputy speakers will vote and will move away from that. So you cannot pretend that we didn't know exactly what we are, what, yeah, what, but, what, what we are trying to But the to Supreme achieve. Court verdict on this was very clear, was very well thought through. It was clearly a case of that standing of that provision and the constitution. And it was against the constitution. He cannot really declare well, that is what history shouldn't shouldn't so be the reason why they say, although it is inconsistent with the constitution, because of history we are going to pass it. So I say that's your view. So now with that ruling, this is where they are putting them. Because I can bet you any major thing that will have to come, then they have to make sure that all their ministers are in the house. And I can bet you in the last meeting we couldn't do much 
because almost every major decision they have to take, they have to be sure that all their ministers are in. Because if they are not, well, simply empty my side and tell them that you don't have a decision quorum. Mm. And nothing gets done because of this kind of ruling. So you see, there's a tradition for every parliament. When you go to UK, most of the things they do, it's not even written. Yeah, but that's the UK style of doing business. And you go to the oh, House of... Different. Well, if you go to Congress in America, yes, they have a lot of things written. Even with that, there are things they still do that is not written. So when you see us do things, that's why a lot of other Supreme Court just, uh, judges have said that what happened in Parliament is a closed book. It's not for others to go into it. But to the now, that that now, now they've chosen to go into it. Well, they put them in this kind of difficulty, and now they have to live with the, the, those difficulties. So they have to, you say they have to be consistent with their decisions? They have decisions. to be consistent okay. with their decisions. So that's so, uh, Muntaka Mubarak, who is a minority chief whip. We're going to take a quick break. When I return, a few more things we'll, we'll interrogate. One is, is, par is Parliament really broke? The majority side is very unhappy with the pronouncement by the Speaker that Parliament has been starved of funds. I'll take his view on that. And then we'll talk about the monetization in politics on the back of the MPP regional election. Stay with us. And thanks for staying with us here on PM Express. My guest is still the Minority Chief Whip, Muntaka Mubarak. Mr. Mubarak, last week, the Speaker stirred controversy. Um, he declared that Parliament is broke. Parliament is not being starved of funds. Is Parliament broke? Parliament is broke. You see, sometimes I, I, I just don't know why we inflict, we inflict this thing on ourselves. What is the business of majority about trying to defend government, not sending money to Parliament? I don't know why, what's wrong with us as parliamentarians. We stretch this thing to point that we the it doesn't make sense. Look, as we speak, go check from our accounts. Money for 2022, apart from salaries, not a dime has been released. Even what was released last week, after Speaker's comment, were part of the outstanding of 2021. But, and, and you get a majority there. When speaker says this, why did I? Why did this even all things came? Mm. It emanated from me, because even what will usually happen is that when we go on recess, by the time we are back, all the official reports will be up, updated. So like, let's say we went on recess on fifth of April, so we come back twenty uh, fourth of May. On that day, you expect to have all the official report that were outstanding, but even as at twenty fifth. In fact, it was 26 where I raised this issue. You, the, the, the latest you had was 22nd March. It hasn't been updated. It's not been. So Why? you have 22nd, 23rd, 24th, all those things up to 5th April. Because of, is it because of lack of funds? So I raised that, Mr. Speaker. This is unusual that we don't have all the official report. Evans, maybe, you, I don't know, the vacancy here. Maybe you can talk to the clerk and go to our printing room and say, it's been over a year now that this house, our printing gadgets were going down, and the time to replace them were due. But because of lack of adequate funds, it's been postponed, postponed, postponed. Now, they cannot even print quick, because a lot of the machines are down. The time to replace them has long passed, and it's not been replaced. So speaker said, that, look, you know the challenge that we're having. Most of our printing gadgets are not really working. So it makes all the process slow. And coupled with that, we didn't have even enough funds to buy all the necessary materials to be able to print this. So we rest assured that these official reports will be done. Now we start on 25th. We are still struggling to come up with much official report. Then if you're not careful, that of May, we'll start coming when Parliament is going on recess again in July. Why? 
there's no resources to be able to, to, to do that. And you know, these official reports are what even we as members of parliament, there's not that when you are upstanding and you are speaking, you don't really, when you are done, sometimes you don't get to know exactly all the things that you said. It is these official records that you take and read portions of what you said and if there were any controversial issues, you look around it. Are you referring to the Hansard? Yes. Okay. The Hansard is what we call yeah. the official report. So, so the Hansards are now in arrears. You've not printed them yes. all in the, in the yes. field because of because lack, of lack of funds. So you and affecting the printers yes. that some part of. And you see, the challenge also is that Evans, because that one has to also be corrected. You know, we also correct that yes. to get the final one. So when you don't correct it early, and these things happen in March, we are in May. Probably this week we'll go into June, and you bring me March issues that were raised and debated, say, in July. And then I get and say, oh, no, no, this is not exactly what I say. You are going to put the house into confusion. Because there will be arguments. Oh, no, you said it. Oh, I didn't say it. But why? It's been three months, four months. That's why correcting them as soon as possible is very, very important. Because everybody still has the memory to be able to remember that, oh, this is exactly what happened. Yes, yeah, someone said, that, oh, the audio, the videos are there. This house, by the time we sit for four hours, you are into this video mm -hmm. thing. You know the volume of the video mm -hmm. and even the audio. In going to search for them, it takes much, much longer than when we are trying to correct them. It, it, it's something that happened last week and we are trying to correct it now. So it's part of the reason why you always want these hands are ready in good time. So speaker says that. And then you have the majority there. Who was not even on the floor? Try to respond to him. And I ask. Whose interest is the majority of the seven? But he's a, he's he's a seven? minister for parliamentary affairs. No. Sits in cabinet. His parliamentary affairs business has nothing to do with running parliament. He leads the house. The leader of government business. He leads the house here. But the nitty gritty of what happened in this house. Yes, he sits on the parliamentary service board. So yes, he may be privy yeah. to, to... So to he was just giving information that... No, but I'm saying that to. trying to contact this speaker on issue of whether we have money or no money, in my view, whose interest was he going to serve? Is it that of parliament or that of the executive? But, but the reality is that mm -hmm. maybe you put a challenge to him. Can he provide evidence to show? But he, he that the, 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 I'm not going to announce facts on the floor last week, Friday, I listened to, where he says the money the speaker was complaining about Friday was released. No, and I said that even what... He said the process had begun. No, and I'm saying that even what he claims had been released, I'm telling you, as also the minority whip, you see, in this house, yes, we are, the, fact, principal, the, we are the principal the officers, the speaker, the majority leader, the minority leader, the minority whip, the, the majority whip, the minority whip, and the clerk. We are the principal officers of this house. And I'm telling you that even what they claim to have released is part of the arrears of 2021. Get that. Arrears of 2021. 2021. It's not. So you say saying that for 2022, apart from salaries, <laughs> that has been they haven't released money. Yes, not a dime. So once someone sits there and then he argues with Mr. So how are you functioning then? If that's the case. That is a, so the, the worrying thing is that. So I, I, I your electricity on because I really. You remember that electricity was going to get. Yes. yes, if they had come to cut the listen, maybe we'll run the generator till the fuel and it also runs out. Then we are done. Me, my prayer is that we'll get. If I ever become a speaker, even one thing you can guarantee, I will run this house like the commons. I won't take our release in IBS. Well, you don't have money, but you can pay salaries. I won't open parliament. But we are paying you, you have to come to work. No, but we, how do we come? We will not pay our electricity, we will not pay for our consumers, uh, consumables, suppliers who have credit us. And now, you know, one thing is creeping in. People supply things to you, say... To Parliament. Parliament, say, last year, June. And for one year, they've not been paid. The accountant said, look, if you pay me that amount of money that I was to take from you, I cannot even replace my stock. So please, can we do something about the price? And they will justify. So suppliers are charging Parliament more now? They, they are trying to. The, and the, we are saying, oh, no, this is... on your inability to pay. They say, no, this is the price we are going to say, yes. But when we agreed, we didn't agree on when you are going to pay me. And then it's taking you eight months, ten months, one year, you've not paid me. Now, with the law, exchange losses, if you give me the amount of money that I charge you, that stock I gave you, I can't replace it. 
and it makes a lot of sense. But you know, our procurement uh, laws do not allow that. So today, if you are not careful and you want someone to supply something to Parliament, they are being careful. They want to know, do you have money to pay me? And now because, for example, you need these cameras agently. This one has supplied this camera last year. You've not paid him. But this one is now insisting that unless you are going to pay me now, I cannot supply you. You are tempted to take the money that will have been used to pay your outstanding, to try to pay this one so I can have this one run. So this one keeps running you on your corridor, always trying to look for his money. And because it's parliament, people are very difficult. Should we sue them? Should we try? Can you imagine a, a company suing parliament? One day we just come and they come and pump the, the speaker's vehicle because of indebtedness. If I were a speaker, I will close down the house. So when you have money, because th that's what happened in the, in, the, in the commons. They just go, they are vote for, let's say, January to March, the sitting. They take it before parliament resumes. So they run with their money there. So they pay their everything, cash and carry, and run so that the house will not be, will not be, will not suffer any delay in its operations. Now, I told you that this meeting is the meeting of uh, uh, oversight. Oversight. Our committees are not able to go out. Still? Yeah, because if you are going to go out and you write a memo to speakers, people say there's no money. Is that what is actually happening now? Yes, so you can't go out. So if you can't go out, so you cannot play the oversight. Right? And remember, next budget, they are coming to us again for another approval. You've not been able to use this meeting to go around and see the things that they promised they're going to do. So it all adds up to the weakness in Parliament. So all we sit here and do is that people come and tell us stories, and we take the story that is they say as the gospel truth. Sometime until the Auditor General goes to audit, the issue comes. And like Mr. Speaker said rightly, the woes of this country, the chunk of it should be placed on Parliament. I agree. But in placing that chunk on Parliament, ask yourself, how has Parliament been resourced to be able to carry out this function? Because if I'm, I'm resourced to do something and I don't do, obviously blaming me will be right. But if I'm supposed to be resourced and I don't get the resources, it's not like a vehicle without fuel. It's like, oh, but I will give you a brand new, if I will give you a brand new, we just give you a brand new Lancusa last week. But a brand new Lancusa that doesn't just run on its own. You need to put fuel in it. If you don't put fuel, you don't maintain it, you don't, when the tires are, are worn off, you, you don't change them, you can't get the brand new Lancusa running. And that's exactly what's happening to the house. But, but, and my worry is, each time this thing comes, you get persons on the majority trying hard to make it look as if, oh no, parliament is not in this difficulty. And that's why, when you have a speaker that's from the majority side, you never hear him talk about parliament is broke, even when parliament is broke. Because yeah. it is the, the kind of we and them. But it's a, it's a house of records. So instead of just complaining, why don't you put the facts before the house? Ah, it, that's bringing you and I to the same point. Would I get a, if a Professor Quay, will you ever hear Professor Quay talk about the house is broke? Yeah, but or he, as the head of the parliamentary service, agree this speaker to take all these facts. This speaker, like, okay, let's publish it. This speaker so, chose to do it without giving us the facts to support his position that parliament was broke. You want him to put... <laughs> you have even shed more light. I have shed more light, than, yes. than, than And I'm saying, I'm saying that you want speaker, and then everybody will say, ah, you see the speaker... He's so partisan. But if it's, but he, wants, but he wants to paint but the, facts, the, 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 the facts. But facts the, are facts. The house. He wants to paint the the, 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 the government black, and he too is struggling to manage the so-called neutrality of, of speaker. But the truth of the matter is that, I mean, let me tell you, one basic fact: our caucus, the minority caucus, the majority had gone for their caucus workshop, I think, uh, before the eleven. And we've been struggling to go for hours since then. Why? There's no money. How did they get the money to do this? You know, that's the funny thing. Also, when you are in government, they can they can borrow and do it. We can't. Who is going to borrow money to us, minority? <laughs> you have, <laughs> when you have leverage, you can. No, we have leverage. Can you imagine that we ask the driver, oh, we beg you want to come and cover this? Let's assume there are things that we cover and you charge. Oh, if I, oh, do I, can I come and cover this? You know, we are in the minority. We want you to do this and we'll pay you later. When our colleagues will borrow money and come and pay you direct, and the two of us call, who, who, which one will you go and cover? Yeah. That's, I mean, this is just hypothetical. Just, so no. it's because Parliament hasn't been funded, so you're unable to do that. Yeah, right? we are able to do a lot but, of but, but here's the thing, though. Parliament, you have the power 
to bring the finance minister to the floor to come and answer this question that affects your work and you haven't done that look so why are you complaining you're, you're opening another pandora's box when i was a majority whip finance from setepe i gave him a permanent seat i gave the attorney general a permanent seat and the finance minister oh why i said no these guys we need them every day here we need them so they must have permanent seat go find out any day we get a ticket ask him the choir this chair will tell you say, oh, master, you cannot be sending deputies so you have to be here so he comes to sit he appreciate the challenges that is going on. are talking the person appreciates these guys are always uh, when i say they say why am i saying i say they turn the finance as a team god 90 percent of 99 percent of his business have to be done by deputies Always begging. Oh, you know, is in some World Bank meeting. Is in an IMF meeting. Is some foreign donors of guys in the meeting. So you won't have time for Parliament. Always, if you want, today, going to July ending, tell your reporter Parker to count the number of times the financial will come and conduct his own business. His own business, oh, not that the one that we Parliament wants him to come and do. His own business that he has generated from his ministry, that he wants Parliament to get done. He won't find time to come to do that. Look, just Friday when the 75 million euros, go and check the records. Whether he was there, deputy minister, and they were begging, oh, you know his travel, oh, he's, so, so I said, so when will he make time for this house? When it's time for budget, then he'll come. Media review, he'll come. That and that. Questions. Look at the number of questions that have been but you asked of the finance minister. You have the we power can, to. but the challenge is that there. The speaker can, instead of you, complaining no, to the chair, no, 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 have someone no, no. the finance minister to come no, and the explain. The interesting thing that you forget is that, with the greatest of respect, speaker sitting there cannot summon the finance So you can. It is you the raise house. the issue. So you raise the but issue. But you have to no, no, ask no. for him to You raise it thousand and one times. But the house must take a decision, agree to do that. And you have the majority are always resisting. And finally, I've been resisted him coming to explain why Parliament has not been funded for. We are in the middle of the year now for 2022. You yourself were saying on Friday, I know Don Pray was trying to provide. Yeah, I know Don Pray was. was yes. yeah. They always say, oh, no, no, no. It's not a fact. Oh, some of money was released. But he won't tell you that that money that was released was part of 2021 outstanding. Get the man himself to come. Don't. File a, file a motion demanding that he comes. Babe, what, one of the things that you do. And people say, oh, you keep threatening the ministers. Why are you harassing our minister? Vote of censure. For failure to come. Let's do vote of censure. Yeah, but what is Why stopping is you from doing it? I mean, it's becoming like, it's like every day you are just mentioning one particular minister in bad state. As if you have some personal growth with him. And I don't think any of us has any personal growth with him. He is just failing to be responsive to parliament. Period. That's all I will say. Mm. Because, believe me, Parliament budget, <laughs> apart from salaries, a lot is outstanding. So your salary is not in arrear? Your salaries have been paid on time? Well, if you ask the members of Parliament, they'll tell you, you know, and the sad thing is that MPs are those who cannot open their mouth and talk about delaying salary because of how events you as well will chew our head out. I mean, today is 30, 30th. Yes. I know many civil servants and public servants have started taking their salaries. If you are in this house, the earliest you should expect sometimes a week after the month has ended. Oh, so you're, 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 you're <laughs> so like delayed for a week before you receive it? I mean, if I tell you, I really wish maybe I could just pull my phone to show you when my salaries normally arrive. Fifth, seventh, sometimes tenth. There, there have been a particular month, if I could remember very well, at the peak of the E-Levy. It came after like 15 days. <laughs> <That's why I laughs> that's that's right. Right. So, 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 so they don't allow E-Levy. So they don't have money to pay. So that's why, and who are you to go and open your mouth and say, hey, I saw that day for two weeks. They, you yourself, the media say, parliamentarians, keep quiet and let us have our peace. But if so it's that's how they allow you ask why, because fifth in the new month, this is quite a delay. Oh, fifth is early. Really? Oh, I don't know. I really wish the clerk of Parliament can allow the director of finance. Is it maybe they pay by the internal No, no. I can bet you that by the time you go to accounts now, all the checks for salaries are ready, waiting for release of the funds. Before, because you can't release the okay. checks to the banks. When, when, when there's no money in the account. When in the account. Obviously to banks. So which like the, the, the 
ministry is releasing the money, well, a, a controller is yeah. releasing the money yes. late. Yes. Pres so, presumption that the controller to me yes. not have been been been, been instructed to, to to do that. So after the way Parliament has been managed in terms of finances, it's always terrible. Um, I want to take a break. When I return, we'll talk about politics. Uh, we'll talk about the financing uh, question, the monetization of politics with my guest, Muntaka Mubarak. And thank you for staying with us. My guest is Omun Taka Mubarak. Mr. Mubarak, um, let's talk about something that you possibly are getting very familiar with and very frustrated with at the same time, the monetization of our politics. Again, the MPP just finished their regional elections, and the rumors have started circulating. In fact, all views have started emerging of some of the candidates promising outrageous <laughs> goodies, including giving um, delegates scholarships to travel abroad, etc., etc. This must come to you as great concern, especially because you will have to bear the bedding when your yeah. time comes for election in the primaries. Obviously, and uh, it weakens this house too. Evans, I've been in this house since President Kufo. I'm sorry to say, you have a lot of young guys coming, very brilliant, I mean, certificate-wise, you see, good background. You should, you will expect that this house should grow stronger, but unfortunately the house is growing weaker and weaker because people, spend fortunes to get to this place only to get here and realize that ha ah, really not really much the, if you are going the to the S-Gasha is very fat isn't oh, it? how much is S-Gasha Evans nobody nobody gets S-Gasha that he would take home in my view up to even 150 because by the time they calculate and then take the balance of the car loan and what have you I know people that when they finished all this, they were still owing because they are taking some other bank loans and they were still owing. And now the banks were chasing parliament and said, ah, that's all they have. And we've disbursed and there's nothing more. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they've even lost elections. So maybe you have to follow them. And I know a colleague, I don't want to mention, he's dead now. In fact, the court, the, the, they have to, the bank had to pound his house I see. to be able to, to, to pay. So the danger it's very glaring, Evans. And I must say, when some of us started, we were nowhere near this. The thing keeps growing. We keep talking about it, but we are not doing anything about it. We just keep talking about it. We are doing nothing. The thing is growing. Today, I can bet you, if you meet parliamentarians, 10, eight of them will be talking about this concern. Hmm. But it has become like uh, an addiction. So why don't you do something about it? That's the thing. Because, you see... You have the power because, to, to, because, to the means because of legislation. I have said, one thing that... I'm sorry, I'm saying this. One thing that MPP didn't do to help us was when we were in power, and our late chairman, Dr. Kobneje, said that, look, we cannot continue behaving we and them. Let's throw the gesture first. Because the political class must begin to sit. Because our destinies are tied together. If we joke, this monetization and what have you will sink all of us. Because once MPP does it, say, even to level two, and then they try to match it even to level one, the next time MPP will move it to level five, and then people, NDC will have to try and come up to level three, and then the thing will be escalating. So I remember I was at FEC. When Dr. Komerje decided that, he, as the national chairman of the ruling party, will move to the office of the MPP. A lot of our members were against it. No, 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 no. It will show weakness. It will show what they want. He said, look, I lead the party and I'm going. He carried us. We visited them. We talked. And our simple hope was that they were going to retaliate this gesture. It never happened. And then all the guys who were against the going said, ah, we told you. Look, even if the two main political parties don't find a common space to sit and discuss this and nip this, it will get out of hand. 
I'll give you a, a simple analogy. I have a lot of senator friends because of Pan-African Parliament. When it started, you visit them and you say, they say, hey, me, my country, you can't do this. Oh. So, have you heard the just ended presidential primaries of the PDP in, in Nigeria? Nigeria? If what I'm hearing is anywhere near the truth, then it's even more scary for us, the political class in Ghana, to start with Ghana because you see, they keep moving and we keep following, mm. meaning that we are going to get there. That a candidate, would I mention them because I don't have the mm. evidence, I only heard mm -hmm. a candidate paid over a thousand delegates, twenty thousand dollars each. That's a, that's a, that's and a another governor who, who was also contesting paid. In fact, I'm told that, that this person who won first gave ten thousand, and then this governor came selecting. And giving fifteen thousand about dollars, thousand dollars, and then this one came back with additional ten ten, so he ended up paying. And the delegates was telling someone that, and uh, 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 what do you call it, confidentiality, that hey, so far me I bag forty thousand dollars. So, Evans, wow, is anybody really thinking? If you think it cannot get here, remember there have been primaries here, MPP primaries before the twenty twenty election, mm -hmm. where we all heard the rumor. Where someone gave thousand five hundred dollars, another one CDB, gave five thousand. CDB corruption were confirmed those. Five thousand, five thousand. Uh, Ghana. But it happened in the NDC too. And in the NDC, I've seen, I've heard, sorry, not seen, mm -hmm. I've heard that somewhere someone gave thirty-two inch television yeah. to each delegate with a deep freezer or fridge and a cooker. Look, we are sitting on a time bomb because even I ask that if there's no that much money in this house and you spend this much money to come here how are you going to make it so so what should we do about it look the conversation must start with the two political parties and we need this uh, maybe idec maybe cdd we beg you try and mediate between this i'm sorry for lack of better word these two giants who are bent on this doing it their own way and i'm talking about ndc mpp so that we can all agree and try to, because you see, self-regulation is the best in yeah. this. Uh, because you heard some of the reporters that they, because, <laughs> because of what happened to the new driving at the MC or something, they are taking the people to the washroom. The washroom. And then there's somebody standing there to be saying, if you're not a delegate, you won't enter that. into the washroom. What kind of crazy thing is this? Should we should we amend the, our political financing laws in Ghana to, to place limits on how much you can spend throughout the, ta the talent, the talent you are going to have is that even the current laws that we have, how are we implementing them? Because nobody is enforcing it. The electoral commission is not enforcing it. Let them audit it, let them let present the audited account. Because a lot of the money are spent in darkness. They don't get accounted for. Mm. The political actors, all of us, everybody tries to do things and hide it. But if we come to a point that we agree to do self-regulation, what is going to happen is that you have 80% of the people doing the right thing. So those who are doing the wrong thing may be just 20%. So it's easy to cut them. But when you have it the other way around, that 80% of the people are doing the wrong thing and 20% are trying to do the right thing, it is just too difficult. 20% will all lose their elections. Yeah, I they can't compete so, But when it is the other way around and we are self-checking, so I agree, we all agree that we are not going to do it. So even say he's not going to do it, then I'm doing it. He will try and get evidence to help the system to track me uh. and pull me down. But when both of us are doing it, the one who is taking is able to hide it. The one who is doing it is hiding it. Who is going to provide the evidence? Mm. So that's a challenge. But if we can mediate to get the two giants, the political party, to sit and agree that, look, this, we all know the things we do that is wrong in this thing. When it comes to primaries, how we pass the money around. But, but you but, never see the candidate. If, if it's wrong, why do you still do it? It is, you see, the challenge we are having is that Oh, you should say you won't do it. The other one is doing it. Okay. And he's going to kick you out. Then say that, oh, I won't sit down for me to be humiliated by this person using on this unauthorized method. Then I will outsmart him. And sometimes even the delegate play as against each other. Mm. The electorate, they play as against. Oh, you go to a funeral. Me, when they go to a funeral, and my, they say, oh, the MPP are doing I say, I'm not here because of MPP. Whatever they are doing, let them do what they are doing. Me as an MP, this is what I can do. I, you know, I have a standard. If somebody in my constituency dies and is prominent, when we go, 
the donation, I will give it 500. I'm not going to change because MPP have come there and they've given 1,000. So if you want, Chama, Secretary, you can all contribute and add up. But me, this, it is difficult today. But you hear them, apparently you even finish giving your 500. They hear the MPP to are giving 500. No, they've, they've come to instigate you that, oh, these guys are doing this. Then by the time you realize, you now go and do the 1,000. Then they run to the other and say, hey, the MP has 1,000. So people cannot do your 500. Then now they will not be struggling to match up. You see, we've been doing this, but when we agree, the two political parties that this is a no-go area, these are the lines we've drawn, the few that will draw beyond the lines on both sides will be checked. Can you imagine somebody promising delegates uh, a scholarship in America? <laughs> Evans, we have MPs as we sit in this house, including myself, who have gone to the U.S. Embassy for a visa, and the visa has not yet been issued. I mean, I know someone who has gone to apply and they told me that the earliest he can get interview date is 2025. There's somebody who has no idea what's happening. He's promising people and he's saying that in two years, if I don't achieve this, come and push me in my office. I, I heard this in the news on yeah. your new network yeah, yeah, this yeah. afternoon. Yeah, I mean, uh, So, meaning that, uh, let's assume, he has what it takes to assist all these guys to apply even for a scholarship uh, or for a school in the U.S., and the U.S. have given, the U.S. schools have given them the I-20 or what do they call it, for go and visa. At least I know now if you put it in the application, the earliest you may get an interview in 2025. That two years will come and pass. Yeah. Yeah, this is what somebody is promising. I don't know whether promise to can be a crime. Because this one who is promising this, you don't need an entity to tell you that when he gets the opportunity, he is going to create more problems, in my view. Because he's promising heaven on earth. Yeah. So that then feeds the corruption. And then talking about corruption, very quick thoughts on another big matter that emerged last week. I know the speaker spoke about it, Chairman Sabosu too. Um, I mean, your, your, all, all your uh, uh, former late um, Forestry Commission CEO and General Secretary of the Party, Sir John, died. And his will popped up. And we've seen a lot in it that has led to questions about propriety, but also asset declaration. There's a view that because of the revelations in there, it just strengthens the argument for us to review our asset declaration regime, where now you just have to file. Nobody looks at it until there's a controversy and the, the, the matter is, is petitioned for by a court. You, you back those who say we should review it? Obviously. In the nature of the form that it is. Yeah, I'm so one person who constantly asks nominees that appear before the appointments committee. Yes, yes. I mean, I mean, I mean, you declare, declare your assets. And sometimes you get very prominent guys. I mean, those that you think should have known this have not done it. And the unfortunate thing is that if you look at Article 286, it doesn't really say much. So you should be reported to Shrag. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Shrag. And Shrag, what do they do? You don't end up hearing anything. We need to review it. Others are of the view that, yes, in the part of the review, let it be published, let everybody know. Well, we should be careful about our, our, our antecedents. You see, one of the things that I believe that has brought this as this, where, with a greater respect, having two toilets in your homes became a crime. And people were lashed and all that. Yes, those are all things that... But have times have changed now. Times have, times have changed. So that we need to look at this in the review. We need to be very sincere with ourselves. What is it that we can do in the review? What is it that we cannot do? I perfectly agree. The, in the nature and form that it is today, Evans, to say in Mali, it's just a useless exercise. Mm. To just say very mal, that it's just a useless exercise. Because you can choose to... In fact, it is demolable. That brought some even few changes yeah. because I remember we used to seal it. The last time I sealed it and then they got there and they said they had to open it. I said, why, why, why hasn't you open it? So, uh, why did you open it? Oh, our new chief says that the thing should be uh, open. I said, oh, okay, if it's going to open for everybody, for you to, because they wanted to ascertain that at least the witness lawyer has been endorsed and those things. Because what you could do as events is even to take an empty one. Yeah. Not even put your name on. And just put your name on the on the on the on the envelope. And then send it to them. And then they will just collect and put it there. Yeah. But at least now they will open she even has to call me for corrections and those things. And I thought that well, his own initiative was just good. But will his own initiative 
had taken us to where we wanted. So no, le legislative, you're saying? We need to legislate. Put it into law. Okay. But you see, in doing it, let's be frank and honest with ourselves. Because even where we are heading towards is very scary. Uh -huh. It's very, very, very scary. And you see, you you look at things happening in other countries and think that oh, it can never happen here. Let's let's be careful. Mm. Let's uh, move to Mubarak there, uh, frank and honest about what we should do about the asset declaration regime. Um, there's a lot that he said that we'll monitor to see how this meeting of parliament goes. If a Japa comes, I guess his words may come back to haunt him uh, when it comes to how firm their resistance will be. I guess time will be the best judge. Enjoy the rest of your evening.